perfect. Okay, so like God was saying, um, I'm just going to do a basic introduction of agents and we're going to cover what they are and some of the things that define them. So first, let me just introduce myself. I'm Miguel Neves, an AI solution architect at TensorOps. Uh, TensorOps is a consulting company working to accelerate uh, businesses through AI adoption. We've worked with many companies such as Notion, Panaya, JFrog, and much more. Um, but without further ado, let's jump right into it with one of my favorite quotes from Andrew Ng regarding agents. So he says, an agentic workflow is an iterative and collaborative approach to interacting with LLMs that mimics human problem-solving processes. So notice here iterative and collaborative, which is the real key difference from previous uh, LLM applications and that we'll discuss in a little bit. So I just want to touch on that some of the materials here uh, were inspired from Google Cloud Innovators. They have great stuff going on there. And we really felt that the, it would be great to explain some of the agent concepts from the ground up. Okay, so let's start off with a, an example uh, defining what is an agentic flow and what's not. So on the left, we have a task like uh, type an essay, you go to an LLM and you say type an essay on a certain topic from start to finish. And if you go to ChatGPT, for example, what will happen is it will give you the answer in one go, but then you will have to manually review it, see what's wrong, ask him for other stuff. While on an agentic workflow, you tell it, okay, please write me a, an essay on this topic. And it will say, okay, maybe I need to go and search the web for some information. I'll write the first draft, uh, the draft, then it will evaluate it, doesn't look so good, it will redo it and it will continue until it finds a satisfying answer. Now, this is much more akin to what humans do, right? Where they are much more autonomous and plan ahead and can adapt on the fly. And this is where really the part from Andrew Ng's quote uh, shines. So I just wanted to give you an overview of the components of an agent. Um, like I said, I'm only covering the basics here, but we have three main components. One of them, the memory, you're probably already very familiar with from chatbot applications which all have memory by now uh, but the two main components that are key here is the planning and the tools so the planning is exactly this ability to reason and plan ahead and adapt the plan if needed and the tools is what allows the agent to interact with the environment perform actions such as go on an api or use a certain python function or much more so agents, what they do is effectively they are increasing the abstraction layer between the user and the machine. No longer do you need to explain every little thing to the machine that you want it to do. You could just tell it your overall goal and then it will find the path until that, that goal. So it, uh, it plans and executes for you. And that's really where the potential of these agents shines and where we see it. And so of course, the, then the question, um, um, stands out, which is, okay, but what's the business impact of this? And so Google was just brainstorming and they found very, uh, like many possible applications. And one of the main ones is actually customer support, as we see here, or even call centers and much more. You can use it for sales, marketing, for generating content for social media. There really are a lot of applications. So it's mostly a matter of building good products uh, and finding the, the right um, product flows. But this goes to show all the potential that there is behind agents and why it does deserve most of its hype. So with that said, I wanted to bring an example here. So let's pick a, a travel assistant agent. Okay, so you have a travel assistant and the user has this comment right here. It says, okay, I want to fly to Italy. Please check when, when's the best time to buy a ticket and if possible, buy the ticket for me. So if you were to go with this question to a normal chatbot, say you go to ChatGPT, maybe it would be able to tell you, okay, so you want to fly to Italy, maybe it's better to avoid the summer because too many people will be there, but it, it's not really basing itself on live data, it's just making assumptions, and it cannot really buy the ticket. Now that's the difference to agents. So let me show you a bit of the architecture behind it. So agents, much like other LLM applications, have inputs, which can be sometimes text, images, video, much more. But then it has the memory, which of course many other applications already had, have. The two main things I want to focus on are the decision-making, 
meaning the planning and reasoning, and the tools, meaning the actions. So in this case, it could plan that, okay, so the user wants to fly to Italy, so maybe I'll need to check the prices of the flights. I'll need to check the weather. And it plans out these two things. And then it goes and uses the tools for each one. It goes, checks the weather uh, to, using an API, goes on Skyscanner or something and checks the prices. And it can do this and change the plan until it feels like it has reached the original goal, at which point it will return the, the answer to the user. So, of course, this all seems amazing, right? And a fully autonomous agent, but this use case is really vary in terms of autonomy. So from level one to four, the autonomy increases. We have some use cases in which we're just on level one, where the agent is pretty much just auto-completing what the human is doing, but it's the human who's the driving force. And then you have level four, where no human is required, and the agent is just doing everything on its own. Now, of course, it depends on the use case, but if you were to ask me, You'd say that on many use cases, and on, for example, on this one, the travel assistant, you could perhaps be on level three where the human is only present for risky situations, which in this case could be, for example, buying the ticket itself, because then it presents a risk. But maybe going on APIs is not so expensive, so it could do that by its own. But then again, I just want to really focus on this. It is use case dependent, and you will need to analyze dependent also on the product itself. So let's give a, uh, an overview again and dive into the four key components of agents. Some of them I already mentioned, which were the tools, of course. Then, of course, behind this, there is models, generative AI models, LLMs. I do want to say that for a single agent, you can have more than one model behind it, more than one LLM, meaning your Gemini's, your GPT's, etc., because you may have a model doing, let's say, the reasoning part, another model doing using a tool, another model answering back to the user, uh, different size models with different expertise. You could really customize all of this. So diving deep into what constitutes each of these blocks, for example, on the tools you can use, like I said, APIs, functions such as Python functions or whatever, you can connect to databases. And one of my favorites and most interesting, but that we really want to deep dive here is that you can actually connect to other agents. So you could theoretically communicate with other agents and create this agent environment in which they would be communicating and they're helping out each other. Isn't it like the end of the world when they start to communicate with each other? <laughs> that That's when they replace us, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the key thing. But we're still far away in most use cases. Don't worry, God. <laughs> All right. I was just making sure we're going to survive this webinar, this second one. <laughs> well, let's see what people build. But yeah. And then on the left side, we have the orchestration, which is one of the most important parts because it's and also most challenging because it's where the goal is defined and when the, the agent actually understands it. And then you have the model reasoning and planning. And the plan itself is very important because if it goes off in the wrong way or the model goes in a rabbit hole and never leaves, it can derail completely from the original goal and never reach its purpose. Uh, so that's why it's one of the biggest challenges. So with that said, I did want to give an example of how you could build a tool. We talked about uh, many tools for now. So this is an example with Langchain. It's very simple. You would just import from Langchain and you actually have this tool annotation that you put on your Python function, for example, and you have your argument. Now this argument would be chosen by the agent whenever he calls this tool. So whenever he calls the function, he would input what city he wants to get the weather from. Then you have here, very interestingly, the tool description. So this description of the function is not really for the developer, but it's rather for the agent to understand what the tool does, when he should call it, what does it return. So it's very important to be specific here. Then here we can see on the tool action that it goes to the weather API. And on the bottom, it's just the definition of all the tools that the agent has access to. So um, one way to start off easily is, of course, with Langchain. And then you have other ways, for example, with cloud platforms such as Vertex AI from Google and its agent builder, which facilitates things. It even has a low-code or no-code approach. And it's fully compatible with Langchain. So for example, um, now maybe here we're focusing more on the low-code or code-first approach for this agent builder. But as you see, it's fully compatible with Langchain and Lemma Index. But 
why I, I wanted to bring this up is that we're seeing agents really be more accessible to everyone, for everyone to develop. And I think this is a very exciting thing happening to see what everyone creates. Um, and with that said, I just wanted to give an overview of the Vertex AI uh, agent platform. So on the left, we have a way of using which is fully managed by the Vertex AI. So they have prop proprietary orchestration and reasoning and planning, and you don't have to worry about it. But then you can also do it with open source software like Langchain and Langgraph. And I do just want to say that for the purpose of this hackathon, only open source solutions are allowed, meaning uh, you could not use the fully managed. Uh, you do not have to use Vertex uh, AI or anything, but you can only use open source in general. Um, so with that said, I'll give some final remarks on agents. Whenever you're building one, do try to find a good use case. Think deeply about it before putting your hands to, to code because um, that's one of the hardest and most important parts. Then whenever you're building a tool, one of the problems I've seen and encountered is try to build tools with clear purpose and that the agent understands what they do. Otherwise, it won't call it or it will call it in the wrong timing or something. And finally, evaluate your agent and find a framework to do so. It's not always easy. Sometimes you have to do it manually. Sometimes you can find a metric. But do focus on this part because it's one of the hardest challenges as well. And with that said, uh, I want to thank you all and good, hack good hacking to all of you out there.